Good afternoon again. We're delighted to have the Secretary General Special Representative and Head of the Mission in Côte d'Ivoire to brief you. Madam, welcome, and you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On Friday, the 2nd of June, I presented on behalf of the Secretary General the final briefing on the situation in Côte d'Ivoire to the members of the Security Council. The United Nations operation in Côte d'Ivoire, UNOCI, will uh, close on 30 June, ending more than 14 years of regional and United Nations peacekeeping in the country. When UNOCI was deployed in uh, April 2004, Côte d'Ivoire was a country split in half, divided north from south by a zone of confidence secured by UNOCI and French forces. Ceasefire violations were prevalent, as were serious human rights violations. Only six years ago, several thousands were killed and hundreds of thousands displaced during a crisis following contested elections. In the years since the post-elections crisis 2010-11, demonstrable progress has been made on all fronts. I can point to improvements in the political environment, even while more remains to be done, particularly with respect to national reconciliation and social cohesion. Progress, though uneven, with respect to human rights and transitional justice, an economy that continues to grow, though more is required to correct economic inequality in order to, that all citizens share share in the peace dividend. A vastly improved security situation, though continued efforts are needed in order to develop accountable, trusted security forces. UNOC is closing and leaving Côte d'Ivoire because it has achieved the mandate for which it was deployed by the Security Council. However, consolidating the gains of peacekeeping and sustaining peace will require that more work is done in areas that we all, the United Nations, the government, and international partners have agreed or priorities. These areas are social cohesion, human rights and transitional justice, security sector reform, DDR, weapons management, and civilian disarmament, defense, security, and law enforcement, and communication to consolidate social cohesion and national reconciliation. I'm pleased to report that uh, when you see FM, the radio, has been transferred to Ivorian actors and is now being operating as La Radio de la Paix, Radio for Peace. The United, uh, United Nations agencies found and programs commonly known as UN Country Team and the international partners will remain to support the government and the population of Côte d'Ivoire. However, the country team, which depends on voluntary contributions, is facing a gap of some 50 million US dollars needed to support residual activities. I'm often asked what lessons I would draw from our experience in Côte d'Ivoire, lessons that could be applied to other contests in which peacekeeping missions are deployed. I would like to highlight three lessons. The first one is the importance of the United Nations Security Council's leadership. The Security Council laid the ground for UNOC's success by giving strong political mandates to the head of the mission. The Council was also proactive in adjusting or streamlining UNOC's mandate as appropriate to prevent mission creep. Additionally, the Security Council has been very supportive of uh, intermission cooperation initiatives in West Africa, allowing us to maximize the strategic and operational interregious peacekeeping missions. The second lesson is that the United Nations peacekeeping is mostly likely to succeed in contexts where there is a coalition of international partners 
all working in pursuit of the same goal, peace, and most critically with respect to ensuring that there is a political framework with built-in accountability measures. The foundation for UNOC's success was built by mediation efforts led by African Union and uh, African Union peacekeeping troops deployed by ECOWAS that were eventually rehired by the United, United Nations. UNOC's success was also built by advocacy efforts of women, civil society from Mano River Union, the parallel deployment of French forces and engagement of bilateral and multilateral partners. The third lesson I wish to highlight is the most important. Peacekeeping operations can achieve their objectives and eventually close in contests where the host government is a responsible, responsible partner with a profound commitment to delivering on their responsibilities to the citizen they serve. No peacekeeping operation can substitute for national political will or national efforts to overcome the issues that led to conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end my statement by indicating that much, much more still needs to be done in order to address the remaining fragilities in Cote d'Ivoire. But the country has demonstrated its determination to do the work required for the country to regain it former, its former place as a pillar of peace, stability, and economic prosperity in West Africa. I thank you. Madam, thank you very much. Uh, Rosalind? Yes, Madam. Rosalind Jordan with Al Jazeera English. I wanted to go back to your point about the need for local, basic, political will in order to make a government work. Yesterday we were briefed by the Special Representative for the Central African Republic where he talked about the challenge of getting the more than eight armed groups to agree to be engaged in the political reconciliation process. What, if anything, is applicable in the CDI context? Was this an essential part of getting the parties to move beyond the presidential election crisis of 2010 and 2011? And what support needs to be brought in both within local civil society and from regional uh, neighbors to promote political stability in CDI. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you very much. You know, for the promotion of uh, uh, peace in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, work has been done, uh, work that involved all the component of uh, Ivorian society. So civil, civil society, the political parties, the traditional chiefs, the regional authorities, and even with uh, regard to the populations. So what we have done is to engage all the level of the society to, towards a commitment to work towards sustaining peace and social cohesion. So I think that it is very important to get this buy-in, uh, because if you don't have this buy-in from the population, from the components of the society, it would be a little bit hard to, to move of, toward sustaining the peace. Thank you for your briefing. Uh, my name is Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic daily Al-Quds Al-Arabi. And I have two questions. First, uh, you are among the f a few uh, women who led uh, full-fledged peacekeeping operation. Uh, how can you um, uh, evaluate this experience? Did you find that the other parties, parties to the conflict are more receptive to receive a, uh, an undersecretary general uh, head of a mission as a woman? And the second, do you see the reasons for the past conflict could occur again? As you, ha you know what happened in the, during the election between Guag Guagbo and Al Hassan Watara, and that might, could it occur again in future uh, elections, or are there other reasons potentially could erupt again in Cote d'Ivoire? Thank you. 
All right, thank you very much. So, you are asking me if uh, I felt the Ivorian um, parties more receptive because I, I am a, a female a representative of the Secretary General. What I can say is that uh, um, I didn't feel at uh, any moment any, um, any, a, a, any rejection because I'm a female or, or, or not. I found all the parties. I spoke about the civil society. I spoke about the, the political parties, about uh, the uh, traditional leaders. All of them were very receptive and uh, were, were very cooperative. It is the reason we uh, were able to succeed and then to, to move forward. But uh, no, there was no discrimination because I, was, I, I am a, a female uh, representative of the Secretary General. So now, uh, I cannot say uh, if the past conflict can occur again in Cote d'Ivoire. What we said is that there are still some fragilities. Uh, we issued uh, a paper in which we put forward recommendations with regard to those fragi fragilities. There are six of them uh, that uh, should uh, be really looked after and uh, even supported to uh, allow the government and the population of Cote d'Ivoire to sustain the peace, the, 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 the peace achieved so far. So the most, the, the, the most important, I could say, as everybody knows, uh, is the security sector reform. Uh, the, the Ivory Coast uh, authorities, the international partners, should uh, accompany Ivory Coast to sustain uh, this, uh, this area. So o otherwise, um, nobody can say that uh, it, can it can occur again. Uh, the country now is uh, in peace. The security has improved. The social cohesion and reconciliation, national reconciliation are on, on track. And um, what I can underline strongly is the deep commitment of all the populations and the uh, authorities that this uh, kind of conflict never happen again in their country. Sure, thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, uh, Inner City Press. I wanted to ask two, you two, I guess, uh, accountability questions as, as it prepares to leave. One is about these re the recent uh, mutinies or, or reported mutiny. There have been calls, including by Amnesty International, for the government to investigate killing of civilians and, and people who died during the mutiny. And I wanted to know, is that some, what, do you think that that will take place and do you think it should take place? Anything you can say on that? And also, going back a bit, that Duekwe, I remember asking one of your predecessors at some length, this seemed to be a killing. Many people thought it was by the supporters uh, or the, 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 the forces of pre now President Ouattara. Was it ever investigated? Do you think that there's still issues of kind of victor's justice? And will, the, will those be addressed, or can there be peace with, uh, with that not addressed? Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Uh, some movements from soldiers have occurred in Cote d'Ivoire. I think uh, if uh, I'm not, uh, uh, if I'm, no, I, it is the fourth time it, it occurred. The first one was in 2014 and the last one in, in May. So uh, indeed, some uh, people have been killed and uh, the government is uh, investigating. I know that uh, the investigation is uh, in, uh, in, um, is ongoing uh, with regard to that. Now, with regard to what happened in 2012 in, uh, in Duekui, you know that from uh, that time, uh, at uh, any moment, at, uh, each year when the Security Con Council would uh, renew uh, you know, his mandate, it uh, appeals to uh, the, the authorities of Cote d'Ivoire to really move forward with regard to the investigation. It is what also we kept on doing in, uh, in, in the country. Uh, this, those investigations, they fell under the authority of the, of the, of the country. And uh, uh, we uh, kept on calling on those investigations to be, uh, to be, to be uh, organized. Um, you know, a peacekeeping mission is not meant to do everything in, in the country. 
uh, with regard to UNOC, I think uh, we have done uh, what was supposed to be done with regard to those investigations, and uh, the, the country should uh, take uh, all the steps to um, make whatever is possible to really bring to justice uh, all, all both sides, all the parties from both sides who have uh, committed uh, serious uh, abuse against uh, against human rights. What does Cote d'Ivoire look like 10 years from now, assuming that the political reconciliation holds and that the buy-in holds? Will the poverty rate be cut from 46 percent? Do you see a transformation, perhaps, from a primarily agricultural economy to one more reliant on services and high-tech? What do you see as the future of Cote d'Ivoire? Thank you. Thank you very much. So, 10 years from now, I think if you, you, you consider the path of this country, I don't know whether you know Cote d'Ivoire or not, uh, six years ago, the country, as uh, I explained to you, was really divided, and then they went uh, to a kind of post-electoral crisis. Today, the country, uh, is back to normalcy, and uh, uh, the international um, media, the World Bank, the IMF, are talking about this uh, economic growth uh, that is uh, uh, almost close to two digits. So if the peace is sustained, if the national reconciliation is strengthened, in 10 years, I think Cote d'Ivoire will be uh, much more than uh, it was uh, before the, the, the crisis it, uh, it witnessed. You know, uh, this, uh, this country has always been the blackbone of uh, the economy in West Africa. Uh, they will be uh, probably back to this position, and they will even strengthen the po their position as a leader of uh, the, co the economy in, in West Africa, in Africa also. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Merci. Merci. Pour entrer quand? Euh, tout de suite. Ah, d'accord. <laughs>